blessings and prayers on this feast celebration of the baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks for coming to the party on a very frigid morning. Yes, today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus Christ. And it's an occasion that marked the beginning of his teaching, healing, and feeding ministries. But also his mission of love and compassion for the whole world. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all describe Jesus' baptism within the framework of the Holy Trinity by surrounding Jesus with the Father and the Holy Spirit in that moment. In today's gospel, Jesus heard the affirming voice of the Father calling and encouraging him to recreate the world in the image of God's vision of justice and peace. And all that came through with those words, my beloved, I am pleased. As I told the kids, go for it. Through our baptism, we're called into Christian action. And so in these next five Sundays of the Epiphany season, we will hear again how it was that Christ's disciples chose to follow him and what he taught them about the discipline and the sacrifice of Christian service. In five weeks, the gospel story turns to the disciples who find themselves surrounded by the Holy Trinity high up on a mountain. And there, they are affirmed just like Jesus was in the gospel story today. They were affirmed by the vision and they were affirmed by the voice of God telling them to listen to Jesus. That special moment was the beginning of the baptism of their apostolic discipleship. In other words, go, do. A theme that runs through all of today's readings is new beginnings and God's blessings in every beginning. We heard it, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. We heard it in those poetic words of Psalm 29, which I so much love to hear, that summarize the creation story in Genesis 1 and blesses the people of the world. Then in Acts with Paul, conferring, giving the Spirit of God upon the disciples, and lastly, in Mark's Gospel with Christ's baptism. All of those events stir up something new, something different. God is embedded in the wonder and in the mystery of creation and concludes all of that by saying, it is good. You are good. We can all attest to the element of uncertainty or fear that sometimes accompanies new beginnings. It makes sense though, because as we try different and new things, we are more vulnerable. We become dependent, perhaps. Our faith in God can lead us and hold us in those awkward places of not knowing how things will turn out while we take a leap of faith. God finds goodness, I think, in our leaps of faith. If for no other reason, because we're trying something instead of doing nothing. I invite you to think for a moment on your beginning. Now I'm not taking you back to when you were born. Let's just be reasonable about it. How about your beginning here at St. Gabriel's? Some of you here were present when St. Gabriel's was being launched right next door, yeah, that way. Some of you were here when this was new. 
Some of you have been here months, maybe a year. In the beginning, there's always a wonder, an expectation, maybe a hope, hopefully a dream. The thought may run through your mind whether this will work for you and for your family, and if not, where to next? If the Episcopal Church is relatively new to you, perhaps you can think back to when you chose to try it out. And what was that like? Or what is it like? I once did a study when I was in seminary. It was when I was doing some congregational development work with Latino ministries. And the thesis that came out of that whole questioning, and I went to like 20 states and interviewed dozens and dozens of churches, was why do you come? Why do you come to church? Why do you stay? I can imagine the early disciples asking themselves a similar question. Why am I following this guy, Jesus? Why do I continue to spread his good news? Clearly it's doing something for me. What is it doing for someone else? In the past few weeks of our stewardship campaign, we heard some testimonies by different people at different places, at different stages in their journeys of St. Gabriel's. And the common thread in, those sto in the stories we heard was the spirit of this community that draws us together. The fellowship, the liturgy, the spirit of God in friendships, the openness. Basically, the loving spirit that permeates in this place because of you. The facilities committee of our church has been searching for a new home. Many of you have heard that for months now. We've been praying for it for months. With the support of our bishops and clergy colleagues, I've embarked on a new beginning, seeking out churches that might be interested in supporting our mission as St. James's financial commitment begins to taper off as they had committed to do. A new beginning with other partners who affirm the mission and ministry of St. Gabriel's is so exciting to me. I get to tell the story the way it is now. They get to tell me the story that they might have followed a year or two or three or ten ago. We are in a place of great possibility. There is the fruit of new growth. And so with our hope, prayers, and commitment for a permanent place we can call home, we are already embarking on a new beginning. We are embarking on God's vision of justice and peace wherever it may lead us. We are a work in progress. It will always be. And in the name of God, it is good. Scary, yep. <laughs> it's a change. And that requires commitment. It requires effort. It's vulnerability to God. At the same time, it's a time of renewal that requires our faith to be built even stronger and sustain this wonderful community that we all know is very much needed in Leesburg and around us. A final decision to move hasn't been made yet, and there are still a number of factors that have to be considered before the vestry and the bishop can decide. The preparation for baptism, called the catechumenate, used to be a very long process of biblical study, of prayer, of discernment. We're sort of there in that journey. I have felt these past several months that we've been in a discernment, a discernment to perhaps move. It's like a catechumenate for baptism, preparing ourselves, preparing our souls. 
I invite you to continue hoping for the new spiritual life that we will experience and that we will offer to others in and around our community. Jesus' prophetic words remind us not to be afraid. And so I ask that you pray for this baptismal process that we are in, this new beginning that is already transforming St. Gabriel's thanks be to God. And it is good. It is good. It is good. Amen. 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 <clears throat>